Two teams of adventurers have been battling against the guarded Scorpion Island. With one goal in sight to escape. I really want to win so I can say I've, won, I've escaped from Scorpion Island. Not many people can say that. I really want to escape. After an onslaught of terrifying challenges, it's come to this. Their final escape begins right now. The day has come and the Claw are going to win once again. On a scale of 1 to 100, I would want to win 110. But with it brings a barrage of unnerving challenges as both Team Sting and Claw fight against the devious island. Scorpion Island, you better watch out. The powerhouse is coming. You're meant to be going that way. A little bit nervous, but hopefully I'll be able to conquer my fear and do my team proud. <laughs> Team two are going to give it their all for this. Come on! And escape from Scorpion Island. And welcome to Escape from Scorpion Island. I'm Johnny. I'm Mylene. It may look like a tropical paradise here, but this island is devious and tricky. That's right. Two teams of adventurers are battling it out to be the best, because only one team will escape the island's clutches, and the big escape day is today. After 11 hard and strenuous days, Sting and Claw both want to be the team to escape from Scorpion Island. Scorpion Island, a tropical paradise teeming with nature. But this is an island like no other. It has a living intelligence and a devious, tricky plan to trap anyone that lands on its shores. In recent Scorpion legend, an adventurer came from far across the seas and broke through the island's impenetrable defense system. He was a fortune hunter whose mission it was to plunder the island of its legendary treasure its precious life. After a terrifying onslaught of challenges, the fortune hunter won all of the island's treasure. But on his final escape day, he failed, and the island captured his spirit and locked it away. Now, in a bid to beat the island, Sting and Claw have taken on merciless challenges. And after days of competing just like the fortune hunter, they too have won all the island's treasure. But now they face their final mission, to rescue the fortune hunter's spirits from a mysteriously hidden treasure chest and escape from Scorpion Island. I really want to win so I can say I've, won, I've escaped from Scorpion Island. Not many people can say that. For us to sting to win. It's like putting us in the history book. We have to win. There's no other chance. It would just be such an achievement. So, destiny beckons, and only one team can be victorious and escape the island's clutches, whilst the other, well, only the island knows. But in getting to this exciting day, there have been loads of twists and turns. It's been a perilous journey on Scorpion Island. But the teams are now ready to face the final escape. <laughs> Sting have chosen Natty to lead them on their final day. Natty. Their founding captain who created a team that won time and time again. <laughs> Claw have chosen Dylan as their captain. It's up to me now. We have to win. The one adventurer who proved that he could turn Claw's fortunes around. Yes! 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 Go, Dylan! Go, Dylan! Go, Dylan! Go, Dylan! Two formidable captains, two extraordinary teams. Sting! Taking on one devious Scorpion Island. Last night, it unleashed its final surprise. 
this is it. Both teams have been working hard trying to get as many island treasures as possible. And you've known for a while that whoever has the most island treasures will have an advantage in the final race to escape. Team Sting, as you know, you have eight island treasures. Team Claw, including the one today, you have three island treasures. <laughs> I can now tell you that the island demands during your final race to escape, you must carry the other team's island treasures <gasps> for the first stage of the challenge. So, just to confirm, Claw, you'll be carrying eight of Sting's island treasures. <laughs> Cactus. Sting, <laughs> you'll be carrying three treasures. So that means that, Claw, you're going to be at a disadvantage. The more island treasures that you've got to carry, the more it's going to weigh you down. I'm just going to say to you guys, Claw, don't be too disheartened. Today you won the conch shell, which means communication. Make sure you communicate tomorrow. It'll give you a strong chance of winning. And that goes for you too as well. Lots of communication. That's right. Guys, you can leave the island fire, but have a think about tomorrow, and all will be revealed in the morning. Oh. Off you go. Our adventurers have no idea what the island has planned for their final day, but Sting and Claw team captains Natty and Dylan are on a mission to win and escape from Scorpion Island. I can't let my team down. All's coming and we're not going to be trapped and stuck here for the rest of our lives. We do have a pretty good chance of winning the final escape. I just hope they don't get too carried away tonight because they need their sleep for tomorrow. The sun rises on the island. For one team, this will be their final day. But for another, it will be the start of their eternal exile on Scorpion Island. It's going to be so exciting. Both teams are in with a chance to escape, so the pressure's really mounting. Team Sting have three treasures to carry, whereas Team Claw, they have eight. Earlier on, they said goodbye to their camps. Let's see how they were feeling. The base camps were made by the Fortune Hunter's own hand when he faced the island, and just like the Fortune Hunter, our teams have been using them for shelter and protection. They've been home to happiness, excitement, and all important strategic discussion. Team Sting prepare to leave Tree Camp. I'm gonna miss it so much. I'm gonna miss this place. It just feels sort of like home away from home. Because we've been here every single day. And it's just gonna be so sad to if you think about it, we're never ever going to see this ever again. After mm -hmm. our escape. Just be memory of it, that's it. Meanwhile, at River Camp, Claw say their goodbyes. There we go. Bye. Hands in, Team Claw. Yay! Team Claw! Bye! Gonna miss you. But now they must leave their protective shelters as the island exposes them to the final escape. They will journey from the heart of the twisted Scorpion Island jungle to the perilous beach. As the red-hot sun burns down on the dry, arid sand, the adventurers must face the island's last stand. And they will have nowhere to hide. So we're about to tell both teams what the first stage of the escape involves. They're eagerly awaiting the big news. Morning. 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 Morning, Sting. Morning, Claw. How are you today? Really, yes. really good. Excited? How are the nerves? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the ooh say it all. Ooh mean? We have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. We're really eagerly awaiting it. Captain's got slight nerves. Ooh. <laughs> I think I'll be able to lead the team to victory, okay. though. Today is a very, very big day. In fact, your biggest day yet on the island. Today is the day one of you will escape Scorpion Island and one of you won't. That's right. I'm going to come to the captain of Team Claw, Dylan. Do you think your team are ready for this big challenge, this big escape? Yeah, they're ready. What makes you think they're ready? 
Um, everyone, well, I hope so high from yesterday. We won the challenge yesterday, meaning, oh. you know, everyone's happy, so... So you're all on the high, you got a bit more confidence after winning. Yeah. A very winning day for you guys, weren't it, yesterday? Yeah. We won everything. Oh, we won yeah. absolutely everything yesterday. Would you like to know what today entails? Yes. yes! OK, time to find out about the big escape. Now, the first stage will entail you guys abseiling down the huge rock of prosperity. Yes! traverse the cliff face as the treacherous waters of Scorpion Island crash beneath you. Oh, that's right. Now, some of you are going to have a disadvantage because you'll be carrying the other team's treasures. The island's going to decide the order of your descent. When the adventurers first arrived, they were each assigned a mysterious symbol. Everybody, everybody show each other. I've got a shell. I've got a circle. I've got a okay. monkey. I've got, got a I've got the sun. I've got a snake. Now these symbols will determine who will face each other in the final descent. Now we will select the symbols that you were given and allocated on the first day that you got here. Let's get choosing. The first symbol that I have... Natty. The first symbol that I have, Lizzie. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Natty will face Lizzie on the cliff face. The second symbol, Peter. <laughs> the second symbol for Team Claw, James. <laughs> Peter will take on James. The third symbol for Sting. Katie. The third symbol for Claw. Dylan. Dylan faces Katie. The fourth symbol for Team Sting. Jeremy. <laughs> the fourth symbol for Team Claw. Yes! Zach. <laughs> Happy with that, Zach? Yeah. Zach will descend against Jeremy. Which means the final symbol that I have in my bag is... Jordan. Of course, the final symbol that I have is Eleanor. Jordan takes on Eleanor in the final descent. So, are you happy with your pairings? Yes. yes. Team Claw? Yes. yes. Team Sting? Yes. yes. Well, all that's left for me to say now is it's time for the first stage of the Great Escape. The teams need to make their way down to the beach where they will be returning the island treasures to Scorpion Island. And so, in this first stage of the escape, the members of Sting and Claw will be abseiling down a gigantic cliff face in a series of critically important head-to-head -head races. It will be Natty versus Lizzie, Peter versus James, Katie versus Dylan, Jeremy versus Zach. And finally, Jordan versus Eleanor. Nate and Lizzie will begin clambering down at the same time. A clock will start ticking when the first adventurer reaches the ground. And it will only start when the other adventurer hits the bottom. This time then becomes the head start for the winner's team in the next race down. However, the teams don't just have to get themselves down, they've also got to get their island treasures down too. And after the big swap, that means Claw have got eight to transport, while Sting have only got three. Both of the captains, Natty and Dylan, will carry a treasure down as they climb, but the huge responsibility for dealing with the rest falls to the final adventurers from each team, Jordan and Eleanor. They'll have to pull them all the way down to their teammates before they can make their descent. And, of course, the team that gets themselves and their island treasures down first will win a time advantage on the next stage of the escape. This means that they will be the team that's in the lead, so the stakes are the only thing here that's higher than this cliff. Ah! 
So first up, it's Natty for Sting and Lizzie for Claw. When they arrived on the island, little did they know that they would ultimately be kicking off the escape for their teams. And they've both been on an extraordinary adventure to get all the way to this point. Lizzie came to Scorpion Island with a mission to beat it. I'm fearless and nothing about Scorpion Island scares me. And she's proved she's a force to be reckoned with time and time again. Come on, Lizzie! Go on, Lizzie! Yes, Lizzie, you're doing amazing! From being on Scorpion Island, I've learned that I am a great team player. Lizzie, you are brilliant! Come on. Just throw it instead! Just throw it! I'll catch it! You sure? Yeah! I didn't feel a lot of pressure on me because I felt very confident. She's not afraid of pushing herself to her limits, and even the terrifying descent doesn't faze her. I feel confident because I've done abseiling before, but not quite down a rock. But I feel confident that I can beat Natty. Lizzie has a formidable opponent in Natty, who was a strong competitor from the start. When I'm all fired up and stuff, I get a bit pushy. Right, that one, that one, that one. We need to find the bad one, quick. Like when you're on a netball court and you're really going for it, you start pushing the other team around, you know, trying to get the ball. She alone earned the right to be Sting's founding captain. Woo! Natty! Woo! And her leadership skills shone through. I think what I've learnt about leadership while on Scorpion Island is there's a lot more pressure here. You really have to drive your team to victory and you're going head to head at the start. You know, there's all that pressure. She always offered support to her fellow adventurers. You need to communicate more. You're always so silent. My advice to them would be communication is the key and listening to your other teammates. There was only one thing on Scorpion Island that troubled her. I'm sort of a bit freaked out by heights. But she cleverly overcame this in Vanishing Point. Chocolate, 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 chocolate. Whenever we said chocolate was when we were a bit scared of the height. It took your mind away from it. So. Now she's about to face another height challenge. I'm a bit nervous because I'm a bit scared of heights and especially abseiling when you can't see where you're going backwards. It sort of freaks me out a bit but I'll just have to see. Well, Natty, we've seen you overcome this fear and there's no reason why you can't do it again. So they are two outstanding adventurers, but only one of them can bag the first win for their teams here. Will it be gutsy-seeming Lizzie, or will it be Natty, who's carrying the Silver Pit Viper Island treasure and is seeming very nervous? Both teams are ready. Three, two, one. Go! And they're off! This cliff is as tall as a five-storey building. Imagine what steely nerves this must take. Oh, and Natty's looking apprehensive. She's already slipping behind. Lizzie's made a very strong start. She feels very confident with this. And so far, that's paying off. But this is where it gets really tricky. The rock drops straight down now for the main part of the descent. Will Lizzie be able to use her apparent fearlessness to consolidate her lead? She's really leaning back into the walk down. Great technique. But Natty, meanwhile, is struggling. This is a real test for Natty. This isn't where she feels the most confidence. But she is Sting's captain today. She knows that every member of her team has got to play their part. And there's no doubt she will try to push on through the fear. Lizzie's racing down the cliff face. And she's already getting very close to the bottom. Just look at the lead she has on Natty, who still seems alarmed. Lizzie's taking her last few steps down over the rocks. She's going steadily now and has proved much quicker than her opponent. Natty's really taking her time. This is something she is quite frightened of. But she really needs to hurry up because Lizzie's at ground level now and she's racing over to Claw's position on the beach. A very confident start for Lizzie and a great start for Claw. Remember, the difference between the adventurous times is what counts here. The longer it takes Natty to upsell down, the greater Claw's head start in the second head-to-head -head race. Whoa, oh no, she needs to be careful too. It'd be easy to swing around and smack into the cliff, but that would be a time waste that Sting really can't afford. Yes! 
and Natty has reached the bottom. What a great achievement for Natty. Something she wasn't too fond of, but she's conquered her fear. So she's running over to Sting's gathering point, and that's one member down for both of the teams. Natty and Lizzie seem physically well matched, but this ended up anything but a close race, and what split them was Natty's evident fear of heights. I was a bit scared and I fell a bit on the rocks, but once I started to get up and going, I sort of grew a bit more confident, but I was still pretty scared, but I managed to do it. I wasn't scared at all, so I just went, I just raced down as, as quick as I could, and um, Natty had a bit of a fear of heights, so that was kind of an advantage. And it meant Lizzie hit the ground while Natty was still way up on the cliff face. There was an alarming moment when she lost her footing before she touched down with the Silver Pit Viper 32 seconds after Lizzie. So that 32 seconds will become close head start in the next head-to-head -head climb down when Peter takes on James. While Natty and Lizzie look on, they're in position at the top of the cliff. They're both staring straight ahead, clearly trying to keep utterly focused. You just know that they both want to give this their all for their teams, as they have done throughout their time on the island. Peter, intelligent, considered, and has been instrumental in Sting's victory over and over again. If the opposing team were just this far ahead, I would never give up. Next one, go! He was initially one of the more hesitant adventurers. I can't say I'll make a good team captain, but I think I'll do an all-round job, but, but not an excellent job, I guess. But he found the qualities of leadership within himself. Catch it! Yes! And this was recognised by his team. He's just a great person overall. Winning that clamshell was such a proud moment um, on being with Scorpion Island and being a part of Sting. Peter faces the ultimate test now for Sting, but he's about to take on a driven opponent for Claw. Despite his spirit for adventure, James hadn't travelled this far before. I've never left Wales before, except for once when I went to Lapland with my mum and dad, but I've never been out of Wales before, but I should be okay. James earned the right to be Claw's founding captain. James! He pushed himself in challenges. I think Scorpion has changed me by making me more of a team worker because usually I don't really do a lot of like working on a team. And he's been a consistent motivator. We have to stick together now. Yeah, exactly. This, so, is, the, this is the major part of it. We cannot split now. Yeah. We all need to work as a team together and do our best. We have to win. No matter what happens, we really have yeah. to pull together as a team and do our best. But now, will he find the motivation to hang on to Claw's current lead? Really exciting because I'm team Claw going to give it their all for this. We're all going to try our best to get down that, to do whatever we're trying to do and escape from Scorpion Island. Another awesome pair. But remember, thanks to Lizzie having beaten Natty, James has got a head start here. He'll go 32 seconds before Peter, but can he make this count? Three, two, one, go! And James is off. He's making solid progress. Will Peter find it hard to make this ground up? Peter's still waiting to get the OK that it's his turn to go. And that must be so frustrating for him and for Natty, because James is proving just as brave as Lizzie was and taking confident, bold strides down. And even the sheer rock face does not seem to be troubling him. That advantage really is helping Claw. But there's not long now till Peter is allowed to start. Yes, there it is. Peter's away now. Whoa! No, he's OK. Come on, come on, Peter. Don't look down. Well, if he did look down, he'd see that James is already at the bottom and he's dashing over to join his teammate, Lizzie. Yeah. This is excellent stuff from Claw. And it means Peter has really got to pick his pace up. Yeah. Oh, no! That might have cost him precious time. Well, Peter's new technique of bouncing is proving much quicker than the small steps he was taking earlier. Hurry, get up, Peter, quick! 
So he's back up again, and now, yes, he's there! He's racing over to join Natty, and she should be pleased with him as he's managed to cut four seconds off Claw's lead. James made great time down the cliff face, really taking advantage of the 32-second head start Lizzie had won for him. I did try and go as fast as I could, but some parts I couldn't go because I kept stopping, stopping halfway down. But, I mean, it was really fun. I still enjoyed it. He was almost down to the beach before Peter could even get going. And though he essentially had no chance of victory, Peter did manage a quicker descent than James. After doing the challenge, I feel so confident and proud of my team. And they should be proud of you, Peter, because you've clawed it back by four seconds. So in the third race, Katie will start 28 seconds after Dylan. And while the gathering teams look on from the beach, they're in position at the top of the cliff. Cade is standing proud, and it's an unusually serious moment for Dylan. It's clear this is going to be a full-on race between these two incredible adventurers. Dylan has faced Cady before, and he's proved himself to be a formidable opponent. But he's also brought laughter and happiness to the team. That was great! <laughs> Should I turn the bubbles on? Oh, no. oh, no. You're really funny, and you make everyone laugh. Above all, he's brought victory. Yes! 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 Scorpion Island has taught me to be more confident in myself and boosted up my capabilities. Go Dylan! Go Dylan! Go Dylan! I think my favourite island challenge was um, Sinking Swamp. I did really well in that challenge and I found it really fun, you know, just jumping around on the pontoons. Claw chose him to be their captain for today's final escape and he's relishing the opportunity. Scorpion Island, you better watch out. I'm going down that cliff and the powerhouse is coming. He faces Katie, who proved to be Sting's secret weapon in the Fortune Hunters' challenges, using her fierce intelligence. Yes! yes. Finish. And stop the game! Congratulations, guys, you've got it. As a keen football player, she knows how to work as part of a team. I think that we'll have to talk to the team about communication, because when there is something important that we need to do, we can't just ignore it because we think our own way is better and her focus and determination in the challenges cemented her role as a valued adventurer. Yes! My proudest moment with Scorpion Island was probably the time when I won the butterfly treasure. Now she's on a mission to be on the winning team and she must summon the strength within her as she descends against Dylan. Two times I've been the same captain as him. The first time I beat him, the second time he beat me. And so I kind of have to beat him. What great characters. Oh, and that's fun to see. James is clearly set to cheer Dylan on here as he comes down with the Scorpion Island treasure. Three, two, one, go. And he's off, and this is a cautious start from Dylan. Go, Dylan, come on! Hey, come on, Katie! Hey. Hey. Great encouragement from Claw. Remember, they've very much been the underdogs, but they have always kept their team spirits up. They did win the last island challenge, the Sinking Swamp, and things do seem to be going their way in this first stage of the escape. But there is still a long fight ahead, and they seem determined to cheer each other on every step of the... Whoa! Dylan! Dylan! That was a massive slip, but Dylan gets himself together really quickly, just as well because Katie's now started her descent. Dylan is bounding down the cliff face. Can Katie possibly catch him up? Come on, Dylan! She's at the steepest section of the cliff, but Dylan's already down. Dylan's running across to the rest of his team. He's one tough adventurer, and they're clearly delighted to have their captain back with them, especially while Katie's still up on the cliff. Come on, Katie! She's trying Dylan-style bouncing. Oh, she's skidding about, but she doesn't seem to be slowing down. This is looking good. Run, run, run! And yes, yeah, she's down and straight over to her waiting team, who seem really pleased with her efforts. Good job, you almost had him. Well, it might not have been quite that close, but this was high-energy stuff. After a careful start, Dylan made his way down at great speed and seemed to thoroughly enjoy it. 
sailing down the cliff was really, really fun. I had lots of fun. And Katie gave it a roll too. I got down quickly and I caught up with Dylan quicker than most other people caught up with their opponent. In fact, she really reduced Claw's lead. This means that Zach will only start 18 seconds before Jeremy, so even one or two slip-ups would be enough to make things really close. Extraordinary. So now, while the gathering teams watch on, Jeremy and Zach are both in position at the top of the cliff. They are two of the most competitive adventurers yet seen on Scorpion Island, and theirs have been amazing journeys. Zack has been on an exhilarating adventure, starting off as the first team captain of the boys and brimming with confidence. Oh! Yes! I'm really pleased with myself and I'm pleased with the whole team and everything. The boys team were successful. The boys. Yeah! Yes, they've got it, they've got it, they've got it. The boys. Yeah! But even when Zack found he was playing catch-up in Team Claw, he wouldn't allow himself or his team to be disheartened. I'm going to kick out the negativity. I'm going to make my team much more positive, and I'm going to make them all into winners. Getting all Team Claw swimming just to have some fun. Thought it might be a nice idea. You can be positive. I've seen you positive. Being on a losing team never knocked his confidence. Yes! Now, does he have the confidence in his team? Last night, there was a lot of anticipation about today, and now the day has come, and Claw are going to win once again. Jeremy came to Scorpion Island and built some incredible friendships. I want to be friends with everyone, and just so everyone knows, I do, everyone is my best friend. It's Square the Unexpected. <laughs> But it was also clear she is a formidable opponent. If I have an opinion, I would put it forward. You mm. talk like anything. I don't talk. You do. To win challenges, you obviously need a team. And you need communication. I've got a team and I've got communication because I can talk. Have you got communication, really? Yes, I can talk. You both seem pretty happy now. Is that the end of the rivalry? No! no. Jeremy was always incredibly loyal to her team. If we didn't win this challenge, I would kind of feel like I let my team down. And she won't let Scorpion Island defeat her. On a scale of 1 to 100, I would want to win 110. The island won't be forgetting these two in a hurry, and Zach's ready to start his descent. Three, two, one, go! And he's off! <laughs> Now, Katie did a fantastic job closing the gap between Claw and Sting, and now it's time for Jeremy and Zach. This is going to be very interesting. They're both extremely competitive. Zach is looking very carefully where he's going. He knows a big slip would be bad news for Claw. And Jeremy, oh, she stumbled straight away. That's not what Sting needed, especially as Zach's already reached the main section of the cliff. It's a really tough climb down, but they're getting so much support from their teammates. Come on, Peter! But he seems to be managing not to lose his footing. Jeremy's still way up the cliff, but he's nearly reached beach level. He's down and running over to Claw. At this rate, you've got to wonder if they might be the team who finally escaped the island. Go, Jeremy! But Jeremy's picking up some impressive speed. Sting really needed to try to minimize. Oh! They need her to minimize Claw's next head start, and that means she's got to balance precision against pace. This is great determination. It's been a rocky route for her, but she's not looking at all rattled. Woo! Good job, Jeremy! And that's Jeremy. She's made it to the bottom. And she's zipping over to her team at the end of another highly animated race. Zack began with caution but swiftly built up steam and it looked like he really relished it. That was so fun. I'd love to do it again. Well, he might want to do it again, but his opponent would disagree. I felt quite scared because I've never actually done anything like this before. 
The lack of experience didn't for a moment seem to affect her unflagging energy levels, but showed in the rough and tumble style of her descent, and it meant that she took 16 seconds longer than Zack to hit the ground. So Claw's head start is the biggest it's yet been, 34 seconds. But next up, Jordan and Eleanor are going to have to send the team's island treasures down. As Claw have so many more to deal with than Sting, this could go either way. Eleanor and Jordan are in position at the top of the cliff. In many ways, they've drawn the hardest roles here. But all the way through their Scorpion Island stories, we've seen these two rise to such occasions. Jordan is Sting's cheeky adventurer who cements the team together with his sense of humour. At the start of his adventure, he was tested by the island immediately. I'm really nervous about going in deep water. Whilst I'm here, it's just gone behind me, so I'm really pleased to go, uh, be able to go back home and say, look, I've come over my fear now. He has taken to the island challenges with gusto. Run! 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 You're really pulling and pulling and pulling and until your arms nearly fall off. Scorpion Island has changed me a lot. I wouldn't uh, thought to myself that I'd be that high up pulling myself along this thin wire. It's just changed my personality. But at times, he has had doubts. Nobody's probably ever going to choose me to do the memory challenge again because I've failed twice now. As a leader, he was a great moderator. If we know that something's going to win us this, then we pick this thing that's going to win us. But as he faces the final descent, Sting must rely on him and him alone to narrow the margin. That's what I'm here for. There's no point coming if you're not going to escape, so I really want to escape. Eleanor has been 100% dedicated. Yes! Putting everything that she has into the challenges. We're going to win, so watch out. Certainly well done! You're doing brilliant! Just get some in for us, please! But she really took it to heart when she didn't win. We didn't win, and I'm quite upset about that because I really wanted to win this cap, and it'll probably be my last chance. Yet, never once giving up. Don't put it on the floor, we'll forget about it. Go, 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 go! <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race, so I think that Claw can do really well in this. Now she's apprehensive about the ultimate challenge she faces. Um, this is probably the thing I've been most scared about, is going down a cliff with water gushing around um, below me, but I think I'll be OK because I've done this before, but never over the sea. And um, by the looks of things, it's going to be quite high, so I'm a little bit nervous, but hopefully I'll be able to conquer my fear and do my team proud. Eleanor's feeling nervous, but she must remain focused. Now they have not one, but two tasks they must complete. First, they must send the treasures down a zip wire to their waiting teammates, who will unclip them before Jordan and Eleanor can make their own way down themselves. Claw still have seven treasures at the top of the cliff, while Sting only have two, so Claw will have more work to do here. It's time for action. Three, two, one, go! And she's off! Ellen is sending down the first treasure, the Venus flytrap. Oh, and it's coming down really fast. Get it! Dylan's zooming over to collect it. Come on, Dylan, unclip it! They need to move swiftly here. They can't afford to waste their head start. Just unclip it! It's not tightened! Dylan! At last, he's got it. Oh, but he's got his glove caught. <laughs> no, no, he's OK. Dylan manages to get tangled up in the clip. And for a second, it looks like he's going to get pulled back up to Eleanor. And this comes at a terrible moment for Claw. Because their head start over Sting is over. <laughs> and now Jordan's sending down the Silver Eagle. And it's absolutely flying down. This is great speed. He's taken off the Silver Eagle and now it's going up for the next treasure. But Ellen is still holding the clip back up for Claw. Jordan seems to be going much quicker. Look at the strength in Jordan's arms. He's got to pull it back up. The team are shouting faster, faster. But finally, Ellen has got the vampire baton and is sending it down. 
Oh, and Lizzie's running over to grab it, but Jordan's already sending the conch shell down. She's got it. Oh, no. The conch shell has just got stuck. It's bad news for Sting. Is there anything Jordan can do? He's really struggling. Can Eleanor make the most of this golden opportunity? No, Jordan's got the conch shell going again. And remember, this is the last treasure Sting have got to deliver. It's down, and that is wasting no time in collecting it. The crab is on its way down now for Claw. And the clock is ticking. The more time they take to deliver all of their remaining treasures, the bigger Jordan's head start is in the final cliff face race. Eleanor is frantically pulling up the rope, ready to get the next island treasure down. There's the butterfly going down, but of course they still have three more after it. This is where Sting's prowess in the island challenges is really paying dividends. Zack's got it. Oh, oh no, is he caught up now? No, no, he's OK, but even small delays here could have a big impact. Eleanor's looking properly frustrated now, but she's still got so much more to do, but the clamshell is on. Let's go, Albert, let's go! Go, go! Well, she wasted no time in getting that one down, and Dylan's got it without getting tangled too. Two more left now! But Jordan's head start is already longer than it's taken any of the adventurers to make their descent. Worrying stuff for Team Claw. And the coral sponge is now making its way down. Hey, at least it'll have a soft landing. Oh! Get it! Lizzie's running up to grab the coral sponge. And she's got it! Only the cactus left now, but that is the most awkward, hugest treasure of all. And it's on. And perhaps because it's so heavy, it's coming down at a real lick. This is fiddly work, but yes, James has got it. So that two minutes and 12 seconds now becomes Jordan's vast head start. He needs to be careful because even one big fall could be enough to put Eleanor right back in the game. So Jordan is on his way down now. Now Sting, they... Whoa! Oh no, Jordan's tumbled over. Hello, Jordan. Jordan leans back far too quickly here and takes a tumble, but he needs to try to waste as little of his head start as possible, so he's got to regain his footing ASAP. Oh, he's still struggling, but yes, he's back on his feet. That fall has cost him dear, so he really can't afford to make any more mistakes. He needs to straighten his legs, lean back and take confident steps. Whoa, he does not look at all steady, but he's got to keep so focused to see this out for his team. Quick, quick, you're not there yet. Natty sounds frantic, but Jordan's taking his time. He clearly wants to reach the beach as smoothly as possible. Quick, quick, quick! Get on the set! He's taken this round for Team Sting before Ellen has even had a chance to start. So Sting will have the advantage in the second stage of the escape, meaning that they're in the lead. But Claude do need all of their adventurers down on the beach before they can continue. And that means Eleanor has still got to make a descent. Whoa, she's going no-handed. This is flamboyant stuff from Eleanor. Let's have some fun, Eleanor. Well, Zach's right. Eleanor might as well enjoy herself. This is the last pressure-free moment Claude will have. And, of course, they're going to really have to up their game again if they want to be the team who escapes from Scorpion Island. She's so nearly there. And that's it. She's made it. Game over. So Eleanor's running over to her team at the end of an extraordinary opening stage of the escape. But how was it for the last two adventurers? You just uh, think, oh, no, that's a long way down. Then you get to the bottom and you're so relieved that... It's all over, and it's just so amazing to do that. Jordan got such a big advantage that he got to the bottom before I'd even started. But there's still a lot more to come, so I'm looking forward to everything else. Eleanor's right to look to the future, because the final result here didn't quite reveal how hard-fought this actually was. 
Having won the final island challenge, Claw's run of success continued in all of the first four of these cliffside face-offs. They only really hit a snag when it came to delivering the island treasures down to the beach. They had so many more to cope with that it was no wonder Sting dealt with theirs much quicker, racking up a massive head start for the final descent. This head start was so big, in fact, that it basically gave them the win, allowing Jordan to complete his descent before Eleanor could start hers. So it was a win for Sting, and they will have the advantage in the next stage of the escape. But on current form, if they can only cope with their large number of island treasures, Claw could yet be triumphant overall. So, Team Sting, Team Claw, congratulations. You've completed the very first stage. Team Sting, good news, you've won the advantage. Yes. You'll start the next stage 30 seconds ahead of Team Claw. You have to return your island treasures back to the island. The treasures have been a crucial part of the adventurers' lives since the day they arrived. The treasures encompass all the qualities that represent Scorpion Island. The eagle symbolising freedom from the island. The silver pit viper portrays the dangers faced by the adventurers every single day. The cactus and survival in extreme conditions. The teams underwent change just like the butterfly. The island is guarded like the silver crab. The adventurers learn to be alert when competing for the vampire bat. As we know, the scorpion is always devious. All absorption of knowledge was signified by the coral sponge. The clamshell lies in wait, scheming at the bottom of the ocean. And finally, the conch shell. Communication always important, especially on the final escape day. But now, the island wants them back. Buried beneath the sand are 11 metal treasure troves, each marked with a design showing which island treasure belongs within. Sting's treasure troves are buried here, and Claw's troves are buried here. But of course, the teams don't know this. Sting and Claw have to use metal detectors to locate them and shovels to dig their way down. It's a race to see which team can return more of their treasures to the island. The adventurers don't know how long they have here. The island could call time at any point, so the teams are going to have to move really fast if they want to avoid being caught out. If one team finishes up with more treasures unreturned than the other, then for each extra treasure they have, they will receive a 10-second time penalty for the next stage of the escape. But as Sting won the first stage, they start the race to return the treasures 30 seconds before Claw. Can they make the most of this head start, or will their rivals claw their way back? It's a momentous challenge for the teams, and they get together to work out their tactics. Guys, we have one of our final challenges coming up, and the, I know they say it's all about communication, but this one, with the metal detector, the noise is only quite quiet, so we actually have to minimise communication or we're yeah. not going to hear anything. So when Jeremy mm. uh, spots the... Um, finds yep, the signal yeah. is this. Wave. But then there's a system, so, so uh, if you um, dig it up and there is... Um, if it's not our, our box, we... Well, we... Um, then, then try not well, to make it obvious, a, but... All of, us, all of us move bury. on except for Jordan. Jordan will stay behind and rebury it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Peter and Jordan, you're, I was thinking keep your job should be yeah. to keep an eye out for the other team. Yep. If mm -hmm. you see them rebearing something, tell us straight away so we can yeah, go right over there. And also, Jordan, because you're the one, if if we find the right treasure, we should run for the treasure. Mm. You know, guys, you know the 30 second advantage? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I think it's more like of a disadvantage because the other team, they're going to watch it. Yeah. And really, uh, it's not really enough. what we need right now. Yeah. But Claw are hot on Sting's heels, and they're just as calculated. Well, guys, we just 
it wasn't our turn for that first challenge. We couldn't win it. Um, but I think this time is the time to bring it back. Yeah, so yeah. do I, because although they've got a bit of an advantage because they have less to bury, um, we have more chance of finding the finding box because there's yeah. more chance of us finding our um, mm, eight, eight than them finding their yeah, three because it'll yeah. be much harder. I think they were running to a lot of ours on their 30 seconds, so we'll be able to watch where they go. Yeah. And then watch and watch because if they Guys, find one never, of ours... Guys, never, ever, ever make a mark on where there's a box. No, because no, then they will they, know. They had a back. Yeah. And also, if, if you find one of Sting's boxes, then cover it back up as much as you can, even more than it was buried, so yeah. they'll have more time. Yeah, and but guys, don't waste too much time no. covering it up. Everyone, when it's in and we're digging back, yeah. everyone go except for one person, one person yeah. keep digging it up, because then yeah. we've got more chance of unburying the Yeah, oven. Because Team Sting have won their 30 second advantage, and because they have only those those three second. island treasures they have mm. to find and bury. Definitely. But and don't think we've got a complete advantage because we've also got a down advantage as yeah, well. Yeah, and because then, they might find do more. all of the hours in 30 seconds. Yeah. Guys, just imagine we are the ones losing, okay? So if you, we were the ones losing, we would be really concentrated, okay? Yeah. We really want to win this, don't we? Mm. So we really have to concentrate. So just we can't right. underestimate no, Claw yeah. okay. as sort of... We just need like to pretend they... As sort they... of low profiles they seem they could easily bite back and win us yeah. and beat us. We need to pretend because they Because I know it no sort advantage. of seems like a disadvantage that they have more treasures, but really in this game, they have more than more cases are going to be out there yeah. for their treasure. Claw's deadliest player right now, I would say, is James. Mm. Yeah. James yeah. has got quite a lot of experience in this kind of stuff and he's got he's got his yeah. mindset on something, he just does it. Yeah. Guys, don't you think we should finish with our team cheer? Yeah. Okay. So. Ready? Natty. Jeremy. Peter. Jordan. One, two, three, stay! Both teams are prepared for the second stage of the escape and Sting have it all to do to stop Claw from catching up even further. So, Team Sting have a 30-second time advantage. They get to start first. Team Sting, are you ready? Ready! Three, two, one, go! And they're off. And Jeremy's taking charge of the metal detector. This is a really unusual challenge because what's critical here is both complete focus and total thoroughness. They need to be sure that there's no way they could have skimmed past a treasure trove. And right now, it looks like Jeremy's swinging the detector rather wildly. Remember, there are 11 treasures there, but they've got to find the three that are theirs. Oh, and it sounds like they might have found something already. Oh, and that's Claw away. Will they be able to catch up? Team Sting haven't started to dig yet. Well, it seems like they're moving on. Perhaps they weren't sure they detected a trove. Oh, but this looks good for Dylan. You think so? Try here. Try and get on the ground. Oh, look at this. Clara digging already. And if it turns out to be one of their troves that they've found, then they could really have got the jump on Team Sting. Right now, it feels like they've wasted their head start. But of course, there's no guarantee that this isn't going to be one of Sting's troves Claw are digging up. Look at Peter looking to see which treasure trove it is. Claw could be doing Sting a favour here. Oh, it's the vampire bat's trove. What a find for Claw. This is where Claw could really catch up and even the stakes. Oh, and now Sting are digging. They must feel certain they've found a trove this time. But will it be one of Claw's? Zach's going over to find out. Don't dig down, we need to dig across. Not anymore. Yes! Over here! Over here! There's another one! Team Stinger, Stinger trying to cover it over. But it's too late. The cat's out of the bag. Zach knows it's one of Claw's and he's desperately digging for it. Come on, guys! Yeah, it's close. Team Sting have moved on and they have got to be getting worried. They began this round with so much less to do than Claw. But unless they start getting shot of their trio of treasures soon, they run the serious risk of being overtaken. The vampire bat's about to be buried, and now Dylan's got the Venus flytrap. Great work by Team Claw here. Roger! Another one over there! Shh! 
Dylan and James are running over to check out where Sting have just been. Will their run of good fortune continue? Since the return of the legendary Team Sting and Team Claw, Sting have almost always ended up the winners. But it looks like Team Claw are catching up. More, Dad. Right. Get sides. And Team Sting are still searching. They haven't found one of the treasure troves yet. And remember, they only have to find three. So, at this point in the crucial second stage of the escape, Sting looked completely adrift. Could all of their hard work and all of their earlier victories be blowing away like sand in the breeze? And do Claw finally have the wind behind them? That's the Venus flytrap placed in its trove. And it's the second treasure they've returned to the island. It's a terrific start, but they've still got six more to go. Never before have the teams needed to channel the spirit of the fortune hunter as much as they do here. The question is, will it be Claw or will it be Sting who's able to dig their way to victory and clasp the advantage for the next stage of the escape? Next time, there are still three gruelling challenges that the adventurers must face. One team will escape. Who will it be? Sting? No, 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 no. Everyone was arguing. I really want uh, the team to pull their act together. Yes! Or Claw. Right. Did we have to win this next challenge and we have to escape? Oh, I'm really, really nervous. Come on, Claw! We need to believe in ourselves if we're going to escape from Scorpion Island. We'll see you next time as Sting and Claw attempt to escape. Don't forget, you can join all the action online right now. We'll see you soon for the next stage of the escape from Scorpion Island. Bye. Goodbye. The big performance is back, and the challenge is even bigger. Let's do this! Singing to 10 million people at Children in Need. Completely live! I'm here to make you look good. But can this shy group get their act together and make it to... Big performance! New series starts Tuesday at 5.45 on the CBBC channel. Good afternoon, everyone. Ricky here with your Sunday roundup of news. Coming up, the chart-topping rapper Example tells us how naughty he was as a kid and the sewage that's not stopping sport relief hero David Walliams. First, right now, millions of people across America are marking an important anniversary. It's 10 years since the 9-11 attacks, which killed nearly 3,000 people in New York, Washington and Pennsylvania. In 2001, four planes were hijacked by terrorists from Al-Qaeda, a group of Islamic extremists. Two of the planes were flown into the Twin Towers in the center of New York. A ceremony is being held there at the moment where the famous, famous skyscrapers used to stand. U.S. President Barack Obama attended the memorial. Thousands stood in silence to reflect on what happened 10 years ago today. In other news, Andy Murray is out of the US Open, so it's down to British junior tennis star Ollie Golding to bring back a Grand Slam title. The 18-year-old is through to the boys' final, and get this, he's going head-to-head -head against his regular doubles partner. The Londoner says winning would be a massive deal for him. To win a Grand Slam is, is a dream, and you know, only, it's only a junior Grand Slam, but it's still it's a big stepping stone on the way forward. My mission is you know, to, to be the best I can be for starters and you know hopefully I can sort of be top five in the world and maybe see myself contending for Grand Slam one day. All right, loads of other sporting action is going on this weekend, including the Italian Grand Prix, which is on right now. Let's have a look at live pictures. Sebastian Vettel of Red Bull is in the lead. British driver's Jensen Button is second. And uh, Lewis Hamilton is now down in fourth place. All right, Wells have narrowly missed out on victory in their opening game in the Rugby World Cup. They were leading towards the end of their match against South Africa, but a late try from the defending champs helped make the final score 17-16 to South Africa. Right, charities from around the world are rushing to help a zoo in Libya. The animals at Tripoli Zoo have been neglected since fighting broke out in the North African country earlier this year. We've been taking a look at the problem. Life in Tripoli Zoo has changed. It's fallen into disrepair since fighting began in Libya earlier this year to overthrow the leader, Colonel Gaddafi. 
At least two animals at the zoo have passed away from the stress of living in a combat zone. Intense fighting and gun battles have been taking place all around the zoo. Because of food and water shortages, many of the animals haven't eaten properly for weeks. Now a group of charities have stepped in to try and save the zoo from closure and rescue some of the lions and tigers. We have a shortage of water before and shortage of food. We have no money to get the food, no funds. As you know, the new government is not still stable. The charities are working to send money to the zoo to pay for food and medicine. No long-term plans are being made by the organisations helping the zoo, as it's still too dangerous to send staff into Tripoli. But right now, the animals are getting some of the help that they need. Right, bit of entertainment now. He's riding high in the charts with his single, Stay Awakes. So we caught up with rapper and singer Example to find out what he was like when he was 10. Naughty, it seems. I used to love skating, like all sorts. I used to, I was like roller skating, skateboarding and rollerblading, but I spent most of my childhood on the streets of London on wheels. I was probably just being told off in front of the whole school every day. Maybe I actually secretly liked the attention though, but I was a pretty naughty kid. I had a hamster called Roger and uh, he got his leg caught in the cage and I think had a heart attack during the night and died sadly. I did loads of people at school, um, but uh, didn't find love till later in life. I can't think of a nickname I had. Maybe L, short for Elliot. It's not very interesting, is it? All right, L. Drama, because I've got to perform and seek attention. Surprisingly, my least favourite subject was music, so I don't know how I've ended up doing this. I would say there was a lot of name-calling, but I didn't really get upset by it. I was just uh, I was quite a happy kid, so people were nasty to me, um, mainly about my facial features, but I was, uh, I was happy at school, so I never really got upset. I got like, mainly A's and A-stars and maybe a couple of B's but I was very naughty. So the school reports were always like, why is his behavior the opposite of his uh, output? Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez might be an item, but the Beepster doesn't take any fashion tips from his girlfriend. The pop star was uh, talking a bit at a big fashion party in New York, where he also revealed that he likes Kanye West style. I've always had an interest in fashion, you know, never like, like to the extent of like I, I had to have name brands or anything, but I just was into like, you know, putting pieces together and trying to figure out what looked good with other, you know, coloring and, you know, um, just ha putting stuff together the right way. So, David Williams has been warned that massive amounts of sewage has gone into the Thames this week. Did that put him off his attempt to swim down the river? No, of course it didn't. David started the seventh day of his challenge to raise cash for sport relief. The TV stars had loads of injections to protect him from diseases in the water. Nice, right, that's all from us. We are back bright and early tomorrow morning. First bulletin is on the CBBC channel at 7.40. Make sure you tune in then. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Deadly on CBBC. Nothing gets you closer to the action. We've got some extraordinary new shows to feed your animal appetite. I'll be counting down to my ultimate hunters in Deadly Top Tens. With new Live and Deadly, we'll be back on the road for more wild weekends. And it's time to go Deadly 360, where I'll be delving beneath the fur and feathers of the planet's deadliest predators. Brand new Deadly 360 starts Thursday, 5.15 on the CBBC channel.